In this video, I want to have a look at more uses of the compound interest formula. So if we're using it in a straightforward way, we can use it to find the total amount of money in an account after a certain time period. But we can also use it to find, calculate the principal, the rate, or the number of time periods. So let's have a look at an example. Spencer wants to save $10,000 for a holiday in three years' time. And we're asked how much he needs to invest at 6.8% per annum, compounded annually, to make this happen. So in this one, we don't know how much he's investing at the start. We don't know his principal. That's what we're going to try and find out. What we do know is the total amount that he wants at the end. So that $10,000 is our A in our formula. We know our number of time periods is three years. And we know that our rate is that 6.8%. So it would be 0.068 as a decimal. So if we pop that in our formula, we've got A equals P outside of 1 plus R to the power of N. We'll fill in what we know. So we know our amount is our 10,000 equals P outside of 1 plus 0.068 to the power of N. Now between the P and the bracket, there's actually a time sign that we don't usually bother writing down. So to get that P on its own, we're going to have to divide by this whole bracket. Oh, sorry, that N should be a 3, because we do know that. All right, so that we're going to divide by this whole thing. So our P is going to be that $10,000 divided by this whole term here. So we're going to put that whole, sorry, that 10,000, that whole thing in our calculator. And we'll end up with $8,208.92. So that's the amount of money that you'd have to invest now under these conditions to end up with $10,000. So that's finding the principal. Let's have a look at the next one. It asks, at what annual percentage rate does James need to invest $4,000 so that he'll earn $1,500 interest over six years, given that interest is compounded annually? So in this one, we're finding the rate. So what we do know is our, uh, he's investing $4,000, so that's our principal. We want him to earn $1,500 interest. So this isn't our amount, this is the interest that he's earning. To calculate the amount of money he's going to have at the end, a total amount, we'd have to have our principal plus the interest. So that 4000 plus the 1500 we'd end up with $5,500. So that's our amount, that's our A in our formula. And the last one, we've got our six years, so that's our N there. So if we write down our formula and fill in what we know, we'll have $5,500 is equal to 4,000 outside of 1 plus R, because we don't know R, to the power of 6. Right, so this one's a little bit more tricky to rearrange to get R on its own. The first thing we're going to do, because there's a times in there, we're going to divide both sides by 4,000. So we're going to have... Um, 5,500 divided by 4,000 will give us 1.375. We'll leave us with 1 plus r to the power of 6. So that step there, I divided this, 5,500, by 4,000. All right, the next thing we want to get rid of is this to the power of 6. So just like the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root, the opposite of putting something to the power of 6 is to take the 6th root. So I'm just going to flip this over as I write it as well. To get that 1 plus r on its own, so to get rid of that root, so that power of 6, we're going to take the 6th root of that. So it's going to look like a square root sign with a little 6 above it. 1.375. So in our calculator, we're going to write um, above this key here. You're going to, so we're going to go shift that button. We're going to put a 6 in there and 1.375, which gives us this huge horrible thing. So we've got 
uh, 1.0545, and we'll just put dot, 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 because we know it keeps going. And that's our 1 plus R. So then to figure out what R is on its own, we're going to subtract 1 from that. So minus 1. And we'd end up with 0 0.0545. And it keeps going. So turn that into a percentage. Um, it doesn't tell us what to round it to. Let's just round it to one decimal place. So because this one here is a 5, that'll change that 4. It'll round up to 5.5. .5. So approximately equal to 5.5%. All right, one last example. So it says, when Ruby invested $2,800 at 4.5% per annum compounded annually, she earned $1,000 interest. And we want to know how long her money was invested for. So our $2,800 is what she initially invested, so that's a principal. It's 4.5% per annum. I'm just going to write that underneath. So that would be our rate is 0 0.045. And she earned $1,000 interest. So just like we did in the question above, to find the total amount in the account at the end, we'd have our 2,800 plus our 1,000 would give us 3,800. So now we can put it all in our, um, in our formula. So we've got A plus P outside of 1 plus R to the N. So 3,800 is 2,800. That's 1 plus 0.045 power of n. So we're trying to figure out this n. This is probably the most difficult one to figure out because at this stage we don't have the mathematical tools to be able to figure that out. What we're going to do is guess and check. So we're going to pick a number and put it in here. So we're going to type this whole thing in our calculator and pick a number to put in there. Hit equals and we're going to figure out what answer will get us to this. So let's try that. So we're going to have 2,800 outside of 1 plus 0 0.045 to the power of, and we're going to pick something. So let's go 5. Doesn't matter where you start, let's pick something. If we pick 5, we'd end up with $3,489. So that's actually pretty close. So if we had, I'm just going to write this down so I remember it. If we had n equals 5, then we would end up, sorry, we'd end up with $3,489.31. So that's if n equals 5, that's what we get, and this is what we're aiming for. So it's a little bit under, so how about we try another number, so 1 up. So let's try n equals 6. If we go back in here, and we change that to a 6. We're going to end up with 3,646, so that's getting closer. So if we had n equals 6, our amount is 3646.33. So let's go another one. So let's change that to a 7. And we're almost, we're pretty close. We're only $10 off now. So our amount is equal to 3810.41. So that's probably the closest we're going to get because now we've gone a little bit over. So, so if we want, it doesn't ask us for the closest month or anything like that. It's compounded annually. So we're looking for the year, the, the whole number of years that gives us the closest answer. So this one is about almost, it's about $350 below our target. And this one's only $10 over. So this one's the closest answer. So we're going to have that as our final answer. So therefore n equals 7 years. Alright, so that's a few examples of compound interest problems where we're working backwards.